Hey everybody, I am Mad Max of Maxwell Manor, and we're back with more Final Fantasy XIV, and I actually have the sound up because we're going to do a little bit of the story until we unlock our jobs, and then it's going to be to the reaction videos where I've made a whole fucking playlist because we've got 15 videos to get through. Jesus Christ. Good for her. So I didn't show up yesterday. Um, I... My anemia was acting up apparently, and I had to, uh... I had to sleep it off. But I am down to... 216, I am 90 pounds lost. Ah, and there it is. All we have to do is finish this quest and we can get our uh, jobs and I can get started on reacting to these videos. ウリエンジさん、説明をお願いできるかしら。万族逆に言えば召喚をされていないだけで脅威となる可能性に変わりはない。グリダニアにしてみれば、この万神ラムーにどう対処するのか悩みどころだろうね。イクサル族の万神ガルーダは現在存在が確認されている万神の中でも最も
ミンフィリアここはグリダニア担当のイダーパパリモに同行させるといいでしょうそうね二人ともお願いできるかしら任せてちょうだいいいですともいやだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだれだ Fucking dusty. I need to haul ass the Limsa real quick to turn in my seals, because I have a lot. <laughs> I have more seals than the Privilofs. Hey, there's a reference. There's a reference that nobody will get. I don't give a shit. Was a wash. <laughs> so we gotta go to Gridania. What is this? Oh, God. We have quite the, uh, Quite the list of videos from Derek to myself to Ron to Brad. So we will see how that goes.
So I don't know how long I'll actually be streaming for. I'm already tired, but not as not nearly as bad as yesterday. Christ. Damn these fucking allergies. Oh, I hate them. I hate them so fucking much. Theory. Yep, I can. Cool. All right. So now I'm going to start with the things. There we go. And the first video is Mass Psychosis, How an Entire Population Becomes Mentally Ill. This is from a year ago, This after-school presentation was written and narrated by Academy of Ideas. Check out their YouTube channel for more of their videos. The masses have never thirsted after truth. They turn aside from evidence that is not to their taste, preferring to deify error if error seduced them. Whoever can supply them with illusions is easily their master. Whoever attempts to destroy their illusions is always their victim. Yeah. According to the psychologist Carl Jung, the greatest oh, threat to Jungian. civilization lies... Jungian psychology. I love Jungian psychology. Let's fucking go. I love this shit. ...not with the forces of nature, nor with any physical disease, but with our inability to deal with the forces of our own psyche. We are our own worst enemies, yeah. or as the Latin proverb puts it, man is a wolf to man. In Civilization in Transition, Jung states that this proverb is a sad yet eternal truism, and our wolf-like tendencies come most prominently into play at those times of history when mental illness becomes the norm rather than the exception in a society, a situation which Jung termed a psychic epidemic. Indeed. It is becoming ever more obvious, he writes, that it is not famine, not earthquakes, not microbes, not cancer, but man himself, who is man's greatest danger to man, for the simple reason that there is no adequate protection against psychic epidemics, which are infinitely more devastating than the worst of natural catastrophes. In this video, we are going to explore the most dangerous of all psychic epidemics, the mass psychosis. A mass psychosis is an epidemic of madness, and it occurs when a large portion of a society loses touch with reality and descends into delusions. Such a phenomenon is not a thing of fiction. Two examples of mass psychoses are the American and European witch hunts of the 16th and 17th centuries, and the rise of totalitarianism in the 20th century. During the witch hunts, thousands of individuals, mostly women, were killed not for any crimes they committed, but because they became the scapegoats of societies gone mad. In some Swiss villages, writes Francis Hill, there were scarcely any women left alive after the frenzy had finally burned itself out. When a mass psychosis occurs, the results are devastating. Jung studied this phenomenon and wrote that the individuals who make up the infected society become morally and spiritually inferior. They sink unconsciously to an inferior intellectual level they become more unreasonable, irresponsible, emotional, erratic, and unreliable, and were- Again, a year ago. Well, more than a year ago, August 3rd, 2021. Let's see here. Watching your video, Eric Jungian psychology is my fucking jam. Loving it. Worst of all, crimes the individual alone could never stand are freely committed by the group smitten by madness. No what comment. What's worse is that those suffering from a mass psychosis are unaware of what is occurring. 
For just as an individual gone mad cannot step out of his mm. mind to observe the errors in his ways, so too there is no Archimedean point from which those living through a mass psychosis can observe their collective madness. But what causes a mass psychosis? To answer this question, we must first explore what drives an individual mad. While there are many potential triggers of madness, such as an excessive use of drugs or alcohol, brain injuries and other illnesses, these physical causes will not concern us here. Our concern is with psychological, or what are called psychogenic triggers, as these are the most common culprits of the mass psychosis. The most prevalent psychogenic cause of a psychosis is a flood of negative emotions, such as fear or anxiety, mm. that drives an individual into a state of panic. Fear or anxiety that drives the individual into a state of panic. Boy, that doesn't sound like the mainstream media at all. Not at all. When in a state of panic, an individual will naturally seek relief. Yep. As it is too mentally and physically draining to subsist in this hyper-emotional state. While escaping from the state of panic can be accomplished through adaptive means, such as facing up to and defeating the fear-generating threat, Another way to escape is to undergo a psychotic break. A psychotic break is not a descent into a state of greater disorder, as many believe, but a reordering of one's experiential world, which blends fact and fiction, or delusions and reality, in a way that helps end the feelings of panic. Silvano Arietti, one of the 20th century's foremost authorities on schizophrenia, explains the psychogenic steps that lead to madness. Firstly, there is the phase of panic, when the patient starts to perceive things in a different way, is frightened on account of it, appears confused, and does not know how to explain the strange things that are happening. The next step is what Ariadne calls a phase of psychotic insight, whereby an individual succeeds in putting things together by devising a pathological way of seeing reality which allows him to explain his abnormal experiences. The phenomenon is called insight because the patient finally sees meaning and relations in his experiences. But the insight is psychotic because it is based on delusions, not on adaptive and life-promoting ways of relating to whatever threats precipitated the panic. See, some people would argue that my whole, uh, my fractal tapestry theory is that kind of insight into psychosis. But I disagree because I can point to patterns that, you know, are patterns and thus exist. So, I don't know. It's hard for me to believe that something I could just throw up out of thin air might actually be true. <laughs> the delusions, in other words, allow the panic-stricken individual to escape from the flood of negative emotions but at the cost... That's the other thing, is that they're not based on negative emotions, they're based on patterns I've observed over the course of my life, so... ...of losing touch with reality, and for this reason, Arietti says that a psychotic break can be viewed as an abnormal way of dealing with an extreme state of anxiety. If a panic-triggering flood of negative emotions in a weak and vulnerable individual can trigger a psychotic break, then a mass psychosis can result when a population of weak and vulnerable individuals is driven into a state of panic by threats real, imagined, or fabricated. Imagined or fabricated? Our mainstream media would never do that to sell, you know, clicks in this case, but magazines and newspapers back in the day. No, that would never happen. They would never do that. But as delusions can take many forms, and as madness can manifest in countless ways, the specific manner in which a mass psychosis unfolds will differ based on the historical and cultural context of the infected society. But in the modern era, it is the mass psychosis of totalitarianism that appears to be the greatest threat. Totalitarianism, writes Arthur Verse Lewis, is the modern phenomenon of total centralized state power coupled with the obliteration of individual human rights. In the totalized state, there are those in power, and there are the objectified masses, the victims. In a totalitarian society, the population is divided into two groups, the rulers and the ruled, and both groups undergo a pathological transformation. 
The rulers are elevated to an almost godlike status, which is diametrically yeah. opposed to our nature as imperfect beings who are easily corrupted by power. The masses, on the other hand, are transformed into the dependent subjects of these pathological rulers and take on a psychologically regressed and childlike status. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Let me type that down. Take on a regressed and childlike status. I am seeing parallels. This is why I love Jungian psychology. Dude knew his shit hardcore. <laughs> God damn. Derek found a Hannah good video. Arendt, one of the 20th century's preeminent scholars of this form of rule called totalitarianism an attempted transformation of human nature itself. But this attempted transformation only turns sound minds into sick minds. For as the Dutch medical doctor who studied the mental effects of living under totalitarianism wrote, there is in fact much that is comparable between the strange reactions of the citizens of totalitarianism and their culture as a whole, on the one hand, and the reactions of the sick schizophrenic on the other. The social transformation that unfolds under totalitarianism is built upon and sustained by delusions. For only deluded men and women regress to the childlike status of obedient and submissive subjects and hand over complete control of their lives to politicians and bureaucrats. Only a deluded ruling class will believe that they possess the knowledge, wisdom, and acumen to completely control society in a top-down manner. My only problem with this video is that I know all this shit already. I've known all this shit for years. But, you know... I've always been outside of society, so I've been able to see... The, the hoi polloi that want safety, that want to be taken care of, and the government that is more than happy to do that. You know, anybody who would trade a little liberty for a little safety will have neither and lose both. You know that quote. So, I've known this shit. And I've always said that if I ruled the world, it wouldn't be any kind of top-down bullshit. I would mostly be happy to just let my people live their lives as long as they're not breaking laws. And then, you know, that's what the police are for, obviously, but I would go out of my way to consolidate laws and bring them back to where they make sense. Because the laws and taxes and anything government related is so goddamn complicated that nobody could possibly understand it. Every government, not just America's, every government is basically held together by duct tape and fucking twine I don't know it just I get what he's saying but I already knew it <laughs> so I may not have very much else to say and I apologize for that and only when under the spell of delusions would anyone believe that a society composed of power hungry rulers on the one hand and a psychologically regressed population on the other will lead to anything other than mass suffering and social ruin. But what triggers the psychosis of totalitarianism? As was explored in the previous video of this series, the mass psychosis of totalitarianism begins in a society's ruling class. The individuals that make up this class, be it politicians, bureaucrats, or crony capitalists, are very prone to delusions that augment their power. And no delusion is more attractive to the power hungry than the delusion that they can and should control and dominate a society. Oh yeah, because they know the more. The elite becomes possessed by a political ideology of this sort, be it communism, fascism, or technocracy. See, that's the other thing with the ruling classes. They are arrogant enough to think that they know better than the hoi polloi. That they need to take care of the hoi polloi. You saw that happen a lot in the old days. What do you mean you see it now? It's, it's just in a different form. Um... And I mean, I'm not really playing, I'm, I'm kind of playing into that by, by playing this fucking video game instead of, you know, bettering my life or whatever, but... The other thing to remember is I'm a cripple. I'm not even allowed to work. How the fuck am I going to better my life? All I can really do is just, you know, 
fuck around with these videos and play this, you know, these games and hope that somebody who actually has ability can be woken up to the truth of the world, the truth of all things, because, the, the, you know, the old adage that absolute power corrupts absolutely is there for a reason. All right. The next step is to induce a population into accepting their rule by infecting them with the mass psychosis of totalitarianism. This psychosis has been induced many times throughout history, Ugh, and as Mirador explains, it is simply a question of reorganizing and manipulating collective feelings in the proper way. The general method by which the members of a ruling elite can accomplish this end is called menticide, with the etymology of this word being a killing of the mind. And as Mirlu further explains, Menticide is an old crime against the human mind and spirit, but systematized anew. It is an organized system of psychological intervention and judicial perversion through which a ruling class can imprint their own opportunistic thoughts upon the minds of those they plan to use and destroy. Priming a population for the crime of Menticide begins with the sowing of fear. Yep. When an individual is flooded with negative emotions, such as fear or anxiety, he or she is very susceptible to a descent into the delusions of madness. Threats real, imagined, or fabricated can be used to sow fear, but a particularly effective technique is to use waves of terror. Under this technique, the sowing of fear is staggered with periods of calm. But each of these periods of calm is followed by the manufacturing of an even more intense spell of fear. And on and on the process goes. Or as Mirlu writes, Each wave of terrorizing creates its effects more easily after a breathing spell than the one that preceded it because people are still disturbed by their previous experience. More but if you notice patterns, that is the whole basis of my fractal, of my fractal spirituality is that the universe is nothing but patterns atop patterns atop patterns, like a fractal. That's why I call it the fractal tapestry. It is a tapestry made of billions of fractals, and fractals are infinite. So you have infinite, infinitely recursive patterns, and this is one of them. This is the pattern of control. The people who, the people who run the world want to control us and this is how they've done it time out of uh, time uh, time after time year after year decade after decade century after century millennia after millennia from the fucking chiefs in the old days when we were all fucking cavemen saying that you know that tribe over there they want to fuck us up we got to fuck them up first to you know the romans to the egyptians to the chinese to fucking modern day to medieval time the whole frame of time is just the people on top making the people on the bottom so afraid at such weird intervals that it breaks the mind and i mean look at 9 11 jesus christ you want a fucking modern example look at what happened when 9 11 happened it's you can't trust anything you shouldn't you know trust but verify isn't it that's one of them popular sayings. Anyway. Morality becomes lower and lower, and the psychological effects of each new propaganda campaign become stronger. It reaches a public already softened up. While fear primes a population for menticide, the use of propaganda to spread misinformation and to promote confusion with respect to the source of the threats and the nature of the crisis helps to break down the minds of the masses. Oh yeah, that's another thing. If you can't find out where the bullshit's coming from, if you can't trace it, how the fuck are you gonna stop it? <sighs> Fucking Derek. Don't worry, Chip. Don't worry. Don't worry, buddy. Hey, hey. Don't worry, buddy. It's okay. Oh, motherfucker. Come here, Bubby. Come here. It's okay. Yeah. Chip gets scared whenever Derek gets angry. Come here, Bubby. You was just sleeping. You was just sleeping. Yeah, I said it's okay. Come here. Come here. Nobody's mad at you. Here, you want to be on the camera? You want to be on camera? 
Here you go, buddy. You want to be on camera? Here, I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to pick you up and give you brother. Here you go. I'm going to pick you up and give you Look at my puppy. Look at my puppy. Look at my cute little chippy. How's my boy? Oh, it's okay, Bubby. It's okay, Bubba. Here we go. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. I'll cover you up, okay? Here you go, buddy. You get the big blanket. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You get your big blanket. Yes, you do. Here. Yeah. Uh -oh. There. There we go. Okay. It's okay, buddy. Yeah, it's okay. I hate when Derek gets pissed like that. I hate when he gets scared. Uh, it's gotten better than he used to be, though. <laughs> he used to give me fucking migraines with how angry he used to get. Anyway. Government officials and their lackeys in the media huh. use contradictory reports, nonsensical information, and even blatant lies. As the more they confuse, the less capable will a population be to cope with the crisis and diminish their fear in a rational and adaptive manner. Confusion, in other words, heightens the susceptibility of a descent into the delusions of totalitarianism. Or as Mirlu explains, logic can be met with logic, while illogic cannot. It confuses those who think straight. The big lie and monotonously repeated nonsense have more emotional appeal than logic and reason. While the people are still searching for a reasonable counter-argument to the first lie, the totalitarians can assault them with another. Never before in history have such effective means existed to manipulate a society into the psychosis of totalitarianism. Smartphones and social media, television and the internet, all in conjunction with algorithms that quickly censor the flow of unwanted information, allow those in power to easily assault the minds of the masses. What is more, the addictive nature of these technologies means that many people voluntarily subject themselves to the ruling elite's propaganda with a remarkable frequency. Modern technology, explains Mirlu, teaches man to take for granted the world he is looking at. <laughs> He takes no time to retreat and reflect. Technology lures him on, dropping him into its wheels and movements. I wouldn't necessarily say that technology is the root of all evil, and I say that as something of a Luddite. I used to be good at technology, and right around Windows 98, that's when shit went sideways. But anyway, um, I would just say it's any kind of obsession where you... Where you don't take the time to go out and, you know, see the see the leaves for the trees and shit. I mean, I go out every day and walk and turn my mind off, whether I'm listening to a book or just walking chip and not, you know, because I don't, I don't have anything when I'm walking chip. So, um, I don't, I don't think it's technology. I know what he means, though, with the smartphone thing, everybody being addicted to smartphones, but I think anything can become addicting like that. I uh, woke up out, he did sleep, and wandered over, scared. So I picked him up, 
snugged him on camera and put him in my bed. I fucking wish he wouldn't get so pissed at games. Uh, but anyway, that's my thought on that. I don't think it's just technology. I think it's anything. No rest. No meditation. Yeah, exactly. No reflection. No conversation. The senses are continually overloaded with stimuli. Man doesn't learn to question his world anymore. The screen offers him answers. Ready made. But there is a further step the would-be totalitarian rulers can take to increase the chance of a totalitarian psychosis. And this is to isolate the victims and to disrupt normal social interactions. <laughs> alone and lacking normal interactions with friends, family, and co-workers. That is what you call the social credit score or the soft censorship that is going on with the, with the conservative mindset. It's not as bad now as it was a couple of years ago, but it's still happening and it's still bad. Um, if you have a conservative bent and you're popular enough, I'm one of those two things. Like, I don't consider myself a conservative. I consider myself a libertarian. I'm very fiscally conservative, but I'm very socially liberal. I don't care what people want to do as long as it's legal. And even then, I'd legalize all the drugs and let the fucking drunk uh, jun uh, junkies die where they will. But, um... <sighs> With that said, I thought I was socially liberal. It's fucking... The fucking... Bullshit coming out of the, the left these days, Jesus Christ. But even then, even then, I've talked to the hoi polloi. I've talked to the normies. They don't care about this shit. They want nothing to do with this shit. Parents of kids don't want to deal with their kids being taught that fucking gender is, 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 is a construct or some bullshit. Um, that's tomorrow. He got your stakes and R4. So I guess steak for two nights in a row? Oh, I lost my train of thought. Fuck! I hate when I lose my train of thought. Well, anyway. An individual becomes far more susceptible to delusions for several reasons. Firstly, they lose contact with the corrective force of the positive example. For not everyone is tricked by the machinations of the ruling elite, and the individuals who see through the propaganda can help free others from the menticidal assault. If, however, isolation is enforced, the power of these positive examples greatly diminishes. But another reason that isolation increases the efficacy of menticide is because, like many other species, Human beings are more easily conditioned into new patterns of thought and behavior when isolated. Or as Mirlu explains yeah, with regards to the physiologist Ivan Pavlov's work on behavioral ah. conditioning, Pavlov made another significant discovery. The conditioned reflex could be developed most easily in a quiet laboratory with a minimum of disturbing stimuli. Every trainer of animals knows this from his own experience. Isolation and the patient repetition of stimuli are required to tame wild animals. The totalitarians have followed this rule. They know that they can condition their political victims most quickly if they are kept in isolation. Alone, confused, and battered by waves of terror, a population under an attack of menticide descends into a hopeless and vulnerable state. The never-ending stream of propaganda turns minds once capable of rational thought into playhouses of irrational forces. And with chaos swirling around them and within them, the masses crave a return to a more ordered world. The would-be totalitarians can now take the decisive step. They can offer a way out and a return to order in a world that seems to be moving rapidly in the opposite direction. But all this comes at a price. The masses must give up their freedom and cede control of all aspects of life to the ruling elite. They must relinquish their capacity to be self-reliant individuals who are responsible for their own lives and become submissive and obedient subjects. The masses, in other words, must descend into the delusions of the totalitarian psychosis. The totalitarian systems of the 20th century represent a kind of collective psychosis whether gradually or suddenly, 
reason and common human decency are no longer possible in such a system. There is only a pervasive atmosphere of terror and a projection of the enemy, imagined to be in our midst. Transphobes, misogynists, uh, I call them istphobes or phobists, racists, sexists, fucking all this shit. It, it's, they're all labels. Now alt-right and Nazi don't fucking mean anything anymore. Which is a half-Jewish person, that feels great. Thus society turns on itself, yeah. urged on by the ruling authorities. But the order of a totalitarian world is a pathological order. By enforcing a strict conformity and requiring a blind obedience from the citizenry, totalitarianism rids the world of the spontaneity that produces many of life's joys and the creativity that drives society forward. The total control of this form of rule no matter under what name it is branded, be it rule by scientists and doctors, politicians and bureaucrats, or a dictator, breeds stagnation, destruction, and death on a mass scale. And so perhaps the most important question facing the world is how can totalitarianism be prevented? And if a society has been induced into the early stages of this mass psychosis, can the effects be reversed? While one can never be sure of the Societally, nothing short of a major cataclysm could reverse a set pattern. And I mean, that works for individuals, too. I mean, look at look at what it took for me to finally fucking lose all my weight. It took a cataclysmic event. It took my doctor fucking me over on a gout medication and me getting so psychotically angry, I could have very well burst a blood vessel in my brain and had an aneurysm. I was so pissed. <laughs> But that's what gave me the motivation to get the job done. But, I mean, you look at how galvanized we became during World War II, during, you know, the war in Iraq, the Viet even the Vietnam War, the beginning of it. <sighs> Fucking, you know, the Korean War, all that shit. Well, maybe not so much the Korean War, that one kind of... I don't know how much support that one had. I don't think that one had very much. But, um, I could very well be wrong about that. But my point remains... The only way to stop a fractal pattern from happening is something big. And I just, I can't see anything big on the... You look at COVID. That should have fucking sh shaken us down to our very souls. That should have been a cataclysmic upheaval. And it wasn't. <laughs> or rather, it was, but it was in all the wrong ways. It was a cataclysmic upheaval to further along the totalitarian line, if you will. Goddamn mouse, fuck off. The prognosis of a collective madness. There are steps that can be taken to help effectuate a cure. This task, however, necessitates many different approaches from many different people. For just as the menticidal attack is multi-pronged, so too must be the counter-attack. According to Carl Jung, for those of us who wish to help return sanity to an insane world, the first step is to bring order to our own minds yep. and to live in a way that provides inspiration for others to follow. Yep. It is not. I fully agree with this, and that is why that is what I do. That is what I have been doing ever since I pretty much ever since I got out of jail, but definitely ever since I got out of counseling. <clears throat> I have been trying my goddamnedest to live by and to set an example for people that, uh, you know, I tell my stories. I fucking, I try to offer advice to my guild. I, I try to offer advice to everybody. I'm trying to make the world better by living as good of a life as I can and trying to help people unfuck their own brains. Because it took me a while, but I finally unfucked my brain. Not permanently. I failed today. I ate my fucking, the rest of my concoction. Six cups of food. That's three times what I should have eaten in a day. I ate three days worth of food. Technically. Well, three meals worth of food then, I guess. And, you know, I fail, but you get back up, you keep going. You don't just give up. What kind of bull, what kind of bullshit, chicken shit stuff is that, you know? Anyway. Not for nothing that our age cries out for the Redeemer personality, for the one who can emancipate himself from the grip of the collective psychosis <laughs> and save at least his own soul, who lights a beacon of hope for others. Is it emancipation when you never were 
fucking brought under uh, brought under shadow I was never brought under. I I was told I'm not allowed to work. I'm not allowed to be part of society because I'm a useless, useless cripple. My lungs are a liability concern. But yeah, I totally agree with him. That's why I try to surround myself by people who are similarly emancipated, even if we never were brought under chattel. Proclaiming that here is at least one man who has succeeded in extricating himself from the fatal identity with the group psyche. Yes, exactly. But assuming one is living in a manner free of the grip of the psychosis, there are further steps that can be taken. Information that counters the propaganda should be spread as far and as wide as possible. For the truth is more powerful than the fiction and falsities peddled by the would-be totalitarian rulers. And so their success is in part contingent on their ability to censor the free flow of information. Another tactic is to use humor and ridicule to delegitimize the ruling elite, or as Mirlu explains, we must learn to treat the demagogue and aspirant dictators in our midst with the weapon of ridicule. <laughs> the demagogue himself is almost incapable of humor of any sort. And now you see why the conservative pundits, the the humorists, the shit stirrers, if you will, um, are censored because it's as he said. When they are seen as the joke that they are, they have less power or no power, you know. But an, an, a fair and just ruler, th those kind of slings and barbs don't affect them. Or if they do, it's such to such a small degree that, you know, I mean, look at Trump. He fucking... He, you could throw anything at that crazy motherfucker and he would just shrug it off because he doesn't want to be a totalitarian. He is just a fucking narcissist. He is the, he is a cult of personality, but at the same time, he doesn't want to be a demagogue. He doesn't want to be a totalitarian ruler. He just wants to be the best, the greatest. He's a genius. Everybody says he's a genius. That's all he wants to be. And it's almost benign compared to this sinister shit. <laughs> And if we treat him with humor, he will begin to collapse. A tactic recommended by Vaclav Havel, a political dissident under Soviet communist rule, who later became president of Czechoslovakia, is the construction of what are called parallel structures. A parallel structure is any form of organization, business, institution, technology, or creative pursuit that exists physically within a totalitarian society, yet morally outside of it. In communist Czechoslovakia, Havel noted that these parallel structures were more effective at combating totalitarianism than political action. Furthermore, when enough parallel structures are created, a second culture, or parallel society, spontaneously forms and functions as an enclave of freedom and sanity within a totalitarian world. Or as Havel explains in his book, The Power of the Powerless. What else are parallel structures than an area where a different life can be lived? A life that is in harmony with its own aims, and which in turn structures itself in harmony with those aims. <laughs> if Final Fantasy XIV or other MMOs were a bit more high-minded, they could be those alternate worlds. <laughs> but alas, they are the bread and circuses of the modern day. And here I am playing right into that. What else are those initial attempts at social self-organization than the efforts of a certain part of society to rid itself of the self-sustaining aspects of totalitarianism, and thus, to extricate itself radically from its involvement in the totalitarian system. But above all else, what is required to prevent a full descent into the madness of totalitarianism is action by as many people as possible. For just That's as the ruling the shit out of them. do not sit around passively, but instead take deliberate steps to increase their power, so too, an active and concerted effort must be made to move the world back in the direction of freedom. This can be an immense challenge in a world falling prey to the delusions of totalitarianism. But as Thomas Paine noted, tyranny Hang on, I gotta get a quote real quick from Derek.
Let me see here. I uh, just need to scroll up a bit. Do 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 do. There we go. Oh my lord, new. I said, I react to the links I'm given, and my roommate sent me one that here's one to give you some big brain think instead of pure comedy. And I have a ranted. <laughs> oh my, yes. <laughs> like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. Oh, yeah. Don't forget that fucking quote from Teddy Roosevelt. Let me find it. <laughs> of course, I've got to go fucking find it. Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, 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 uh. I fucking hate that first one. It is not the critic who counts, nor the man, or not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. Fuck off, you fucking ad. Uh, but who actually, who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. I fucking love that quote, and if it weren't so damn run on, I'd be able to, you know, memorize it. Thank you for watching. Video took a ton of work. Yeah, I fucking bet it did. Okay, video the second. Excuse it. Uh, when delusion meets reality, I never eat. My 600 pound life. So, boy, I get to talk about my diet, too. This will be fun. Oh, hang on. Who is this by? My thoughts will probably offend you. And this was two weeks ago. All right. Plus, lies. When it comes to weight loss, many people have excuses mixed with lies. I can't lose weight because of genetics. I'm just too busy. I'm disabled. I have a eating disorder where I don't eat enough, and so I'm fat. I'm following the diet. I'm just not losing weight. When you come to the recent years, these are very valid excuses in many body positive circles. But what happens when these type of delusional people migrate into the real world? A lot. A lot of anger. Some people don't like being held accountable. Someone who does not take in excuses and lies is Dr. Now from My 600 Pound Life. He too old for that. Yeah. Yeah, they've been here for Jesus. two months, and uh, it doesn't seem like you have lost any weight. No, I have There's no hope for you. You're going to kill yourself young. And someone who was not used to someone holding her accountable is a woman named Ashley who weighed close to 500 pounds. In Ashley's episode of My 600 Pound Life, she praises mediocre work, lies, has many excuses, and then throws a temper tantrum when she doesn't get approval for weight loss surgery. So come on, come with me as we watch the interaction between Dr. Now and Ashley who does not- So, <laughs> a fun story about my 600 pound life. I was watching it religiously after I had my wisdom tooth pulled. They put me under, cost 1200 bucks, very expensive. <clears throat> and my jaw joint, my temporal mandibular joint, got infected. The gum healed up fine. Everything was great. The jaw joint hurt, 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 hurt. I cannot tell you how much it hurt. It hurt worse than every migraine I've ever had. Even the most recent bad one. It was horrible. <laughs> and I kept watching these fatties. And, um, this was right after I just started my diet, so, and, you know, I was feeling kind of weak about it, because I was in so much pain, and, um, she's right, I made excuses, I needed the fucking crap food for the dopamine fix, that was my excuse, I need these nugs, I need these tots, because I need the dopamine, 
Well, there are other ways to get dopamine. And if you're angry enough, you can make it happen. And I did. Now my dopamine comes from the exercise. Because I showed my body. I showed it. I showed it what happens. You want to fucking hurt me? I'll fucking hurt myself worse. Worse. So, because if I'm going to hurt that bad, I'm going to do it to myself. It is completely stupid, completely ass backwards, but you know what? It fucking works. That's how I've lost 90 pounds. And it is, again, it, it comes back to the cataclysm that is needed to change your life. You need a cataclysmic motivation. And for me, it was my doctor. For the for the U.S., it was the Civil War. It was World War One. It was World War Two. It was you know. But again, the fractal patterns. There are there there are all of these patterns. Let me see here. What the fuck was over? Huh, that was weird. That completely derailed me. Anyway, you get the point, though, right? I should not have paused right there. She has got a gourmet ass look on her face. I bet she used to be a fatty. And that's why she makes these videos. You can see it in the neck. Because I got the same fucking thing. Not like being held accountable and wants to get what she wants, which is weight loss surgery. Ashley is on her way to see Dr. Now with her two friends, Quentin and Diera. Dr. Now usually recommends clients who are 600 pounds or around 600 pounds to lose around 20 to 40 pounds a month. For Ashley, he requested that she loses 40 pounds. So remember, these people are morbidly obese, which means they are so fat that they will die. Their fat is killing them. Their obesity is going to kill them. They are the death fats and the infinity fats from the fat positive movements, you know that whole chart? They're at the highest part of that fat spectrum. So therefore, they Whoa. are so big, they can lose chunks of weight because the I want to see that chart. But first I need to get to Forgotten Springs and get the uh, thing there. Just give me just a second. What the fuck? Who fucking left the server? What the fuck is going on? And I'm going the wrong way. I don't know who that is! Ah. Uh-oh. 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 Got to run. They did maps with us often, even played law with shit. Oh. Yeah, that sucks. Anyway, I'm gonna do this real quick. Oh, motherfucker, that's tiny. Come on! Oh, Christ. You bitch. Right, let me just pull up MS Paint real quick so that I can see. Uh, small fat below... A U.S. woman's 18 or 1X or 2X. This is the smaller end of the fatness spectrum. Small fats can usually straddle the line between fat and straight size. God, I hate society so much. I hate society. It made me read this. It made me zoom this in. And read it. Loud. All right, so let me see here. Mid-fat, between a U.S. woman's 20, 24, or 26, to a 3X. Typically only able to stop at, shop at plus-size stores. The brick-and-mortar shopping options are frequent. At the upper end of many plus-size retail offerings, more visibly fat, they experience more size discrimination in healthcare, at work, trouble fitting into seats. I love how it's women. 
What about women? Not men. Nobody gives a fuck about men. Nobody ever gives a fuck about men. I legitimately hate that. We should be caring about everyone. Uh, let's see. Large fat. U.S. women's 26 to 20, 32. Let me see here. Oh, wait. I should do this in the guy's chat. God fucking damn it. Why do I always get a picture of her with her fucking mouth open? That's just jank. I don't like that, anyway. Uh, relegated to online options. The term can also apply to anyone at the larger end of the fatness spectrum, though typically they pay place closer to the middle of the bell curve. Super fat, infinite fat. Lar larger than a US woman's 32, but also it's complicated. Super fat was, was created at a no-lose conference in 2008 and is meant to describe the largest and most undeserved folks in fat communities. They face significant barriers to access in healthcare and clothing, public spaces, workplace discrimination, and beyond. Infinifat describes the same group and came into prominence around 2017 via Ash of the Fat Lip podcast. Her widely circulated size chart is placed super fat below Infinifat, which is often how it is used. Usage may vary, but both terms indicate people on the largest end of the spectrum. Death fat. Term created by fat activist and writer Leslie Kinzel in 2008. The term was not intended to have any specific size range or limitations and can be used to anyone who wishes to reclaim their morbid fatness. What the fuck? FluffyKittenParty.com God damn it, I hate society so much right now. That spectrum. So therefore, they are so big, they can lose chunks of weight because the amount they normally are eating is excessive. No two pounds a week for them. For normal people, normal sized people, one, two, even 0.5 pounds is great weekly, even every couple of weeks. But for someone who is eating five... Every time I pause, it's always with somebody with their fucking mouth open. Anyway, I lose 10 pounds a week. And now it's... Or no, no, no. I, I lost... Sorry. I lost 10, 10 pounds a month. For each month. That's been pretty consistent. Even now, I lost 10 pounds a month. I went from 232 to 222 to now I'm 216. It goes in fits and starts. But, um... Like... With weight loss, it's all about just seeing progress. You know when you're doing good. You know when you're not doing good. You know when you've eaten too much. You know when you've not eaten enough. You know when you've exercised too much. You know when you've not exercised enough. You know these things because your body will send you signals. My body sends me signals all the goddamn time. My body sent me a signal that I starved myself stupid yesterday. That was kind of dumb of me. So I had my crackers and, you know, fixed it. But, I mean... This is not rocket science. All you have to do is eat less, exercise more. That's all you have to do. If you don't have access to a store like I do, you have to have your roommates get you stuff. Sometimes your roommates will get you crap. You know what you do? You don't eat as much crap. If your roommate... Okay, my wife got me a can of mini raviolis because I was having a shit day yesterday and I needed a dopamine hit. The dopamine hit didn't work, but I put the... I put the can of ravioli in with two cups of my soup, of my concoction, which is mostly vegetables, tomato sauce, a little bit of noodles, and some chicken. Mixed it all together. Yes, it's weird. I don't care. And I ate it. It wasn't the best thing for me, but I didn't eat two fucking cans. I didn't eat four fucking cans. I used to eat four cans. Don't eat them now. I mean, we're going to Hoo Hut next Thursday. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of a date night turn house night turned i owe my buddy ron christmas dinner and um i mean i'm probably gonna have like three plates but it's gonna be meat potatoes veg uh no noodles because when i went to who hot which is a mongolian barbecue buffet place you know you, you, you fill bowls they put it on the big old grill and they grill it up and it's it's really good <clears throat> when i was a big fatty fat fatty fat I would go and get a shit ton of noodles. I'd have one bowl full of noodles and sauce. And then I would get, you know, the other two or three bowls. And yeah, it'd be full of vegetables, full of meat, whatever. And um, I did that when I started losing weight. And I got super full super quick because I don't need the noodles anymore. I don't need the noodles to pat it out because my stomach is shrunk. It just keeps shrinking, thank God. So what I did was um, 
these last few times, I've done it without without noodles. Just tons of veg, a little bit of meat at the bottom, tons of sauce. Fry it up, tastes good. So my plan is to this time is to do a beef stew for the first bowl or for the first plate, which is going to be potatoes, mushrooms, you know, stew stuff, um, some beef, and it, probably like a teriyaki or something. Maybe I'll do teriyaki chicken on the second one. I don't know. The second one's going to be chicken. The third one is going to be sweet and sour pork because I always like to end with a sweet one on the end. So. You know, I mean, it's not the best for me, but it's certainly not the worst for me. And when we get home, either I will walk a ton beforehand or I will walk after. It depends on, you know, how late we get back. Because if we get back at around like six or seven, it's still a little bit light out. I can knock out a walk. And it also depends on how cold it is. But, you know, it's not rocket science. If you know you're going to be fucking up a day or like say I'm in a ton of pain. I thought I would be fucked today, because yesterday I was so fucked. I had planned, okay, uh, here, you know what, I'll fucking read it. I'll read what I said. Here, hang on, where is the fucking thing? If you're going to the store, can you get me a can of chili and some shredded cheese? I want to make myself some chili cheese fries tomorrow, because I apparently hate progress or some kind of treat. Please get me something healthier than chili cheese fries. If you're not going to the store, though, don't worry about it, I'll just have fries. I don't know what's wrong with me, I don't feel sick, just absolutely turbo wiped out. And she brought me home a bag of, uh, you know, microwavable bag of Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. They're roasted Brussels sprouts and, you know, salt and ketchup, or salt and pepper, and they're really healthy. And then um, she got me the can of raviolios, because that is a safer option than dumping a can of chili and a shit ton of, of cheese on French fries. Which, don't get me wrong, I still need the salt, but, you know. It's, it's degrees. It's degrees. You have to, if you know you're going to do bad, do less bad. Then, even if it's bad, it's not as bad. This is not difficult. This should not be difficult. It should be easy. Why is it so hard for people? Why was it so hard for me? I couldn't admit, admit to myself that I had to try a different way. I had to have a different approach, a radically different approach. And that is what it takes to lose weight. That is what it takes to achieve any goal. If it's not working... You, you have to have the hard work ethic, but you also have to be able to shift. You have to be able to make a radical shift if something is very obviously not working. I've walked before I lost the weight, but I was still eating like a pig. And it took the gout flare to, to get me to radically shift away from using food as a dopamine delivery vector. Now it doesn't even work as a dopamine delivery vector, which kind of sucks for the pain. <laughs> but... I would rather lose the dopamine than keep the weight. So it's a net positive. Anyway, I'm going to get back to the video. I've ranted enough, I think. 8, 10, 12,000 calories a day or more, and they break that down to a lot more of a normal number, they'll be losing mass amounts of weight. So for these people, two pounds, not enough. 20, 30, 40, 50, I think in one episode I saw him say a pounds a month. For Whoa, 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 what the fuck did I miss? Gonna sound crazy, but you all seem so fake. That actually insults me a lot. <laughs> like I go way, way out of my way. <laughs> To not be fake. To be authentic. Even if said authenticity is a bit off putting. No, you're right. Of course, just zinged me a bit. His loss, I suppose. It said, his loss, I suppose. Y'all, the realest bunch of bitches, bastards, and preferred pronouns I've ever hung with, for whatever that's worth. <laughs> Look!
look, it's a hooter. I kind of want to see where this conversation goes. <laughs> there you go. That's how I disarm that little joke. Now I'm reacting to someone reacting to 600 pound life and ranting about weight loss and how one can do it it actually connects really well with the previous video so that's kind of nice cataclysmic upheaval patterns and destructive patterns and shit like that. Didn't expect things to get so heady, but here we are. For some of these excessively large people is right where he wants them to be. So on the way to Ash's appointment, she is feeling extremely confident because she says that she has done everything that Dr. Now has asked her to do. She is extremely dedicated and she is following through everything. I know how hard I worked again and how I pushed myself even more this time. And that gives me confidence. But I still have a lot of fears running through my head again for this appointment because it is very important to me that I get weight loss surgery this time. So Ashley has to lose a certain amount of weight so that she can get the weight loss surgery that she wants. Doctor Now doesn't just throw those things out there, especially to these people because they are straight addicts. I'm gonna just go ahead and start eating right like I should be doing. But then I wake up and I give in right away. You have to change your mentality, yep. your diet, your habits, everything, and pretty much prove that you can actually do this because not to mention, weight loss surgery like that is extraordinarily dangerous, like dumb amounts of dangerous. My mom actually got a weight loss surgery way back in the early days before they really had this shit nailed down and they actually had to reverse it on her because it fucked up so badly. Weight loss surgery is no jokes. The reason he puts these people through this, not only for our amusement on fucking TLC or whatever channel it is, is but is if, if they don't stick to it, he's pretty much killing them quicker. So he needs to be sure that they're in it to win it. Otherwise, you know, he's he's having to deal with basically being responsible for killing them. And whatever else you can say about the guy, he, he is a doctor. He doesn't want to kill his fucking patients, even though he knows some of them probably deserve it. <laughs> you know, bad behavior begetting bad behavior and shit like that. Anyway. So the surgery does not force you to lose weight. You still have to work for it. So if you can't work for it before the surgery, you can't work for it after the surgery. So let's see how she does. Yeah, that too. In my too. last appointment, I was at 476. And after now, wanted me to lose another 40 pounds. That means I have a number lower than 436. Four seventy five. And she lost two pounds. And like I said, you might be saying, yeah. well, she lost something. For her size, that's not good. If she lost two pounds this month, that means she's still eating an excessive amount of calories and clearly not sticking to the amount of calories that she'll have to stick to after surgery. Which, what does that mean? It means she ain't on the path to get the surgery she won't. So after her little tootsie step off the scale, the excuses start. I'm not sure about that. As if the scale is wrong, and then the lies start settling in. But that number is very upsetting. And it's not making sense to me. My whole scale I don't say that. Of my work. Ashley lost 11 pounds in four months. Do we need Maury in here? Do we need to roll out the lie detector test? No, we know that she has not been putting in the amount of work she needs to, to get to her goal of getting the surgery. And there's no way that number reflects that. So I don't know what happened. 
Well, Dr. Now tells her exactly what happened. Something about Dr. Now, and I don't watch many of this, but I've been watching more frequently. Something about Dr. Now is that he does not feel sorry for people who don't work. He's a straight, Shooter. You do the work, you get the surgery. It, it's a very easy equation. You lie and be lazy, you don't get the surgery, and you most likely just die. And he will not coddle you, even if you cry. Waterworks doesn't work for him. And as you will see, not only is Ashley a liar and full of excuses, but her attitude is just very demanding. But I'm very upset and worried right now because what I need is weight loss surgery from Dr. Now. So if I'm not gonna get an approval today, then the least he can do is respect how hard I'm working. But she didn't work hard at all. Ashley expects Dr. Now to say, oh yeah, you did 9% of the work I asked for you, which is an F, and you want me to reward an F. Let's just think about that really quick. He asked her right. to lose 30 to 40 pounds per month. She's on month four. Let's just say he asked 30 pounds a month for her. I'm not sure if it changed every single month for her, but we'll just take a lower end. He asked 40 pounds, I'll say 30. If that was the case and he asked her to lose 30 pounds per month, it's been four months, that means that she would have needed to lose 120 pounds and she lost 11. That's 9%. That's an F. Some of you people who are obese, who give me a lot of excuses, have children. And so if your kid came home from school and got an F on an assignment, would you be happy with that? You're probably saying no. Well, if your kid came back and said, but mom, I did 9% of the work, right? You probably still wouldn't be happy. I like to compare it to that. 9% is an F. You put absolutely no effort. But Ashley is expecting people to kiss her feet for her F work. And you know who won't be kissing them little tootsies? Dr. Now. All right, Dad. So how you been? I've been, I've been good. How you been? I'm good, but I'm concerned about a few things. Girl, don't be giving him the... What could you possibly be upset about? It can't be the weight loss. I did 9% of what you asked. So Dr. Now breaks it down with numbers so she can understand. Spoiler, she doesn't understand. Or she refuses <laughs> to understand. She takes all the words that he's saying and it just goes... Doo, 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 and over there. One is you lack of weight loss because you are... 475 today, yes, sir. which is pretty much no progress. That means you're still eating between four to 5,000 calories a day. And Ashley does something that many people do when they don't get results. She tries to deflect the fact that we all know that she's not working or doing the things that she's supposed to do. And instead she tells you everything that she has been doing, but the things that she has been doing hasn't been that big of change. That's another thing. Um, I know it sucks. There are a few people who know the diet thing sucks more than I do. I love food. Even though it doesn't give me the dopamine, the crap food doesn't give me the dopamine anymore, I still love food. And it took much longer than I'd have liked for my stomach to shrink. But I still did the work. I did it late. I didn't... I... I have no excuses. I mean, the only explanation I have is that uh, my doctors told me I could not run. I could not exercise, or I would die because of my lungs. But even then, that's not an excuse. That's the excuse I told myself. And as for the diet, I already told you the excuse I told myself there. That was for the pain. And um, the fact that I could have lost this weight 20 years ago and didn't, partially due to ignorance and partially because I didn't want to take the risk i didn't want to believe that i could do it 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 hurts i could have done this i mean it's only been 11 months i could have done this i could have done this when i got out of jail i could have done this when i got out of high school i could have i mean god i oh shit uh no worries i'm ranting on stream so, we're all talking in our way. <laughs> that was nice. Um, and yeah, it, you, can't, you can't just do the exercise. And you can't just do the dieting either. You can't just starve yourself. You can't just go anorexic. You've got to do the exercises too. I mean, I'm sure the wife is going to watch this later. I'm sorry, hon. But I have to say it. It's eat less, exercise more. I know you've got the DVD player so that you can do your exercises. And I know you've got that book. So you've got the exercises. You just have to do the food. And I know it sucks. And I'm here to help if I can. But it's still 
you know, you, you've got to want to do it more than you want the food. And look what it took for me to want to do it more than I wanted the food, because I still want the food. But when you're ready to really do it, I will be here to help you. I'll be here to help you stay away from the crap that you want. Or limit the crap that you want. I mean, I'm holding on to the 60 bucks for Hoo Hut, right? I don't know. It's at the end of the day, it is up to an it is up to the individual. So it is up to her. Um, yeah, that's I hope I haven't said too much. I hope she isn't pissed at me. <laughs> but it is something that we are all concerned about a little. So I felt I should at least address it a little bit. But anyway, I'm gonna finish up this video. Changes. I've been doing the exercises more. I've been doing the diet, like you told me. I cut off all the soda, more soda. Something I like about Dr. Now is that he has the clients explain all the things that they are doing. And then he follows up with, well, if you made all these positive changes that you say that you made, why did you only get 9% in this class? When you're that big, you can't get a 9%. And you know what face they always make in this part. But uh, you haven't lost much weight, so if she made all these positive changes, why is that? See? Right there. She has to think about a good explanation without saying, uh, I didn't work hard enough and I'm actually not sticking to the diet and I might not be drinking soda, but I'm drinking other high calorie drinks and eating high calorie foods. This one really spoke to me because I had a few family members, one specifically, that would visit us all the time and say how she, you know, isn't losing any weight, but she cut out soda. And as a young girl, I was very confused because if she's cutting out soda, how can she not be losing weight? As I aged and started educating myself on weight loss and calorie intake, I noticed that she was eating everything else except for soda. So she was still eating a lot of food. She just cut out a certain thing that she ate a lot, which is fine. But soda is very addictive and that's great that they cut it out, but a lot of people will cut out what they're addicted to and then eat something else or drink something else to make up for that craving that they aren't getting from taking in the soda. And these people are not reaching for some kombucha. Anyway, when all else fails, she throws her mom into the conversation. Conversation. I've been having problems with my mom also. I've been having family problems too. So I know, I get it. Many people, when they're going through relationship issues, family problems, or even battling depression, they take a break, which usually means they eat high calorie foods, packaged pre-made foods. They're not counting their calories. They're probably sitting more in a dark room and just very depressed. And I get it because I have been there. I used to just eat a lot, sit on my butt and watch TV when I'm feeling extremely, you know, sad or depressed. Yeah, we've all been the there. Yeah. If I'm going through something, why in the world would I eat foods to make it worse? You know, many of these foods are linked to depression and they can shift your mood, affect your brain. Her just throwing her mom in this excuse parade and her obvious being addicted to food makes me think she was probably stress eating and she probably does not realize or maybe just doesn't care how much over she's going when it comes to calories or the lack of calorie restriction that's going on. With your mom about what? Because she's been a little sick. So what does this have to do with not losing weight? She thought if she could get sympathy points, he wouldn't hold her accountable. If she brought up her sick mom, doctor now would say, oh, I understand. That's, that's, I get it now. I have seen the light. You couldn't possibly eat healthy or less than 10,000 calories <laughs> a day if your mom's sick. No, 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 no. Dr. Now is saying, sweetie, you're sick. And also, it has nothing to do with you not losing weight. Because taking care of her doesn't mean that you have to overeat, right? Nobody overeat nothing. So then we get to Ashley's goal. Ashley's goal is to get the approval and the surgery that will... So, with my fatness, the fattest I ever got was 383. I think the most calories I ever ate were in the 5,000 range, but usually it was three to four, usually three and a half. Generally, what I would do is I would eat a big meal and that was be it for the day. Now, I'm not saying that, oh, I'm so much better. I'm just saying, I'm just telling the truth. That is what I did. I'm not proud of it, but... That is what I did. So that's probably why I didn't end up as big as, you know, these people. <laughs> as I just can't eat that much. I mean, I can eat an unholy amount of food. It's just the kind of food I like tends not to be processed crap with, you know, nuggies and 
that stuff notwithstanding. Um, my kind of food is like big, big, fucking big, like eight cups of fucking vegetable beef stew, a stew at a whack, you know, that kind of shit. It's bad, but it's not fucking canned soup bad. Or like, I was never a big cereal eater. I'm not a big sweets guy. I'm more of a salt guy. So, you know, I would take a bag of fries and salt the shit out of them and that'd be that. Or nugs or whatever. The worst stuff I ate was like pizzas, bites, and shit like that. Which is very bad, yes, but it's not like it also has a, it also is is access. I just didn't have access to certain things. So that probably saved my ass too. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Will help her lose weight. The surgery will help her stick to her diet, according to her. What is your objective with this program and saying you want to do this if you're not gonna try and lose weight? I want to get some I want to get weight loss surgery and lose the weight for some all right I need to thank God I need to um I need to write a big thing here Hello. No. Yeah. Oh, look at that face. That face. So I'm going to preemptively apologize, but I am going to say I didn't. I don't think you'll be too pissed, but I'm hoping you won't be too pissed. Um, I'm watching this video about the 600-pound life, and I was bringing up my diet stuff, and I brought up your how you got the book and how you got the DVD and all that stuff. So hopefully you won't be pissed at me or nothing. I didn't Who say you tell this to? Huh? I'm I'm on stream. I don't nobody But I don't but I don't no offense, nobody that we don't like will really pay attention. Well yeah, but and I didn't it's not like I fucking blurted out how much you weigh or anything. I just said that you were looking to lose weight and you got these tools at your disposal and if you need help with if you need help with limiting your intake, I can help with that, because God knows I've limited my intake. Mars Wizard, hi. I don't even want to Well, I figured you'd rather me preemptively apologize than you watch one of my streams and find it and get all upset at me. That part's fine. It's the rest of what you just did just now that I don't have to tell you. Here. You'll probably want to take him for a piss. Oh, yeah. oh shit, it is late. You think? Mars Wizard, how is Ryan doing today? Not too bad. How are you doing, Tim? Mars Wizard, good. There we go. Let's get back to this. The reason Ashley wants weight loss surgery from these people, but she refuses to let them do any of her lab work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the doctor tomorrow and let my people draw my blood because my I know people. my veins. I've never heard that one before. All right, let's just break this down. The logic, Ashley's logic. Ashley wants them to perform a very invasive surgery on her, but won't let them take blood work. Okay, there wasn't much to break down there. Uh, 
So, so after Ashley's last excuse, the fight and flight method starts to roll in a bit. First, she's going to start fighting, then she gonna flee. You don't understand that you don't trust her to do your blood test, but you trust her to do weight loss surgery on you? See, he gets, it makes no sense. The sense that is coming out of her mouth is that zero percent. That's even more of an F than the amount of work she's done for the past four months. That's pretty bad. Ashley, come on. I'm comfortable with her. If we being honest, I'm comfortable with her. No offense. None taken. So Dr. Now is not offended, but actually she's about to be. Dr. Now starts looking through all the data and he explains that the work she's putting in is not what he wanted. She's not complying as a patient. She's not losing enough weight. She has all these excuses. They can't even take her blood work, but she wants them to perform something like weight loss surgery. None of it is making sense. And while Dr. Now is speaking words that she does not like, she is starting to understand that he's not just going to hand her the okay to get the surgery. It's going to be a lot of hard work, uh, harder than expected, she starts to realize that she actually has to work for something. And Ashley is not used to doing that. I'm not gonna have some, no, some stranger draw my blood. I told you that I was gonna have my lady draw my blood and I was gonna send it over here. If that's, if you're not comfortable with it, I don't know what to tell you. So I don't think Ashley understands that Dr. Now doesn't have a shortage of clients. When she wobbles out that door, another client's gonna just wobble on in who is willing to <laughs> actually do the work. So that's that a visual. His work. And as she realizes this, her temper is rising, the blood is boiling. And the more that Dr. Now talks and holds her accountable, all right, let me see here. <laughs> that is a great gif. The more angry she's getting, and her friends are trying to calm her down. See, now I'm getting mad, so now I'm gonna have to just talk to you like I talked to him. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about that really hard before you say that. But Dr. Now doesn't care. He just keeps on going and bringing up Ashley's fault and the fact that this makes no sense and not kissing her feet and handing her the weight loss surgery, which has Ashley shaking from anger. So this is literally a shaking. Issue. You haven't lost any weight and you want us to do a magic for you? Ashley. Nice. So then Dr. Now asks her, you know, how do you think weight loss surgery is going to help you lose weight? You know, what does it do for you? Do you think it will just happen? Why do people lose weight after weight loss surgery? I know it's gonna help me lose weight because at the end of the day, I know what I want for myself. No, no, that's not the question. Yeah, no, nope. So he asks again, how do you think weight loss surgery will help you lose weight? It helped me in so many ways. It helped me to get more healthier. It helped me with, you know, losing the weight. It is just- it oh, okay. Yeah, she keeps failing. She's failing all the tests today. Many people who think people who get. Hang on, I gotta deal with this real quick. Well, like I said, I wanted to preemptively. I apologize. So it wasn't a surprise if you happened to be watching this stream. It's actually really goddamn good. Both videos have flowed nicely into each other. Macro, macro, and shit like that. When you're not tired from work, you'd probably like it. <laughs> oh, God. Alright, let's fucking get weight loss surgery, got the easy No, I don't want to get weight they loss surgery. They just get surgery. the surgery and poof, you know, with a snap of a finger. Yeah, it's like I said. It's, they lose weight. That is not the surgery shit to fuck around some with. type of liposuction type thing and they just suck all the fat out of you. That's not what weight loss surgery is. You really have to work before you get surgery and make sure that you continue to work after you get surgery. You're going to have to do what everybody else has to do, but it will help you a bit with your hunger because your stomach is now smaller. If you still have that drive, especially an emotional drive, 
to overeat, you can increase the size of your stomach, which is gonna make the surgery nearly futile. You're going to just waste all that money, go under a very invasive, scary surgery for nothing. So he asks her, final time, are you sure that you're eating perfect? There's nothing wrong. You're doing your 100% best. So right now there's nothing wrong with your eating habit? No, because it's like now, like I've rarely been eating nowadays. I don't know what's going on. She's got it down. Calorie counting, portion control, not drinking soda. She's basically, according to her, not eating. But she only lost 11 pounds in four months, and she's almost 500 pounds. The math ain't <laughs> mathing up. I get that you think that, but it's not reality. Ashley is clearly not used to people like Dr. Now. She's most likely someone who has never held accountable and surrounds herself with people who do not question her or hold her accountable. Or when someone tried to hold her accountable or question her for her actions, she would get loud and then storm away, which she will do right now. You know what, y'all ready to go? Cause I'm not doing this. I'm not, he's not gonna talk to me like I'm crazy. I've been on the road all day to Point. She ain't crazy, you crazy. I'm not gonna disrespect me. I've been nothing but nice to your ass. You're not gonna do me like that. You know, y'all ready to go? Cause I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's move. I have to say, Dr. Now is so laid back during the whole conversation. He gives no fucks. Face never changes because I know my blood pressure would be rising on this. This man is old. He's been doing this for too long. He knows your ass. Can't put in more work and lose more weight. And you continue to lie. Like these people just continue to lie and have excuses. How does he hold it together? How has he not dropped kick anybody yet? How has he not turned into one of those old anime men that rip off their shirt and they're just all of a sudden buff and start knocking? <laughs> that is a visual. I want to see Doctor Now as an anime man. That would be amazing. Talking the sense into his client. Oh yeah, there you go. How? How is he so calm? You know what? If she was as focused as she was to get out of that doctor's office on her diet and not eating four or 5,000 calories a day, she would have lost a lot more weight. Did you see how fast she ran out of there? It was a fat girl run. It qualifies as a run for her size. That was very fast. She could get a lot of steps in when she puts her mind to it. But no, instead she wants to be very loud in the office, make it known that she's extremely unhappy that she didn't get what she wanted from the work that she didn't do. Oh, I'm done. Like at the end of the day, I've been coming in like, no, I'm not gonna waste my and the whole time her friends are just looking at her like she's crazy and she is and in the end they all drove off and doctor now was very depressed that he didn't get to perform surgery on this individual just kidding the next client came in and he moved on with his day. So as always, I was very <laughs> curious as to what happened to Ashley. Did she actually lose weight? Did she come back and apologize? Unfortunately, she is not active on social media as herself. She was on Catfish twice and she would lie and she was just as defensive as we saw her. In she was on office. Catfish she was twice. Gone, lying and catfishing people. You skippity skip skip hopped. But why? You did the bunny rabbit and you hopped. You hopped your ass in there. Okay. Really? Really? Don't flip this on me. What? This video is way too long already. If you want that video, let me know. I'm gonna do it anyway because I was shocked. Thank you guys so much for being here and watching that with me. And I hope you subscribe so we can watch Ashley on Catfish. This is crazy. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Yeah, no, I don't want to watch that. Oh, uh, what's the next video? Oh, not touching that video. That's gonna be for the next. That's gonna be for next time. We're gonna just close out. And there we go. So, with that... Motherfucker with all this crap! There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right, let's get some questing. Hope everybody liked the uh, the two videos. The wife did say I should stop doing as many videos at a time, and honestly, those two connected so well that I'm I'm willing to uh, call good enough good enough. And what I'll do is I'll stop the video, or I'll stop the stream, rather, um, after I get my level 30 
job for uh, Warrior. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, brother. Well, anyway. So, yeah, I don't have anything else to really add to any of that. I mean, I pretty much summed it up with all my ranting. It's just a matter of... Uh, you have to want to put in the work more than you want the food. And I understand how difficult that is. God knows I do, but... That doesn't change the fact that you still have to do that if you want to lose weight. Or if you want to accomplish any goal, really. You have weight loss, weight gain if you're Tim. Fucking any of that shit. Because Tim is a string bean, the lucky son of a bitch. Although I don't think he's actually trying to gain weight. But anyway, let's get this done. But he's hiding himself. He's hiding his uh, identity. that vile fiend. Fucking worms on. What a dink. There we go. Okay. Still can't believe how good Ron's painting came out. He painted a painting for his boss, and it's far, far and away the best painting he's ever done. Very vibrant, very beautiful. I'd show it if I could. 
I wonder if the wife even showed up on, on the fucking cam. She came behind me to pet the dog, but I don't think she'll show up on cam. Anyway, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna call it at the end here. At the end of this quest, and then just go on my own, because the rest of this shit is really boring. And I may call some of these videos because I don't know. Or I may reorder them. Try to make them fit better. But I think what I should do is either do one or two videos and then play the game. Or maybe I should do one video, play the game, and then do another video. That was what the wife suggested. Yeah. We'll see. It's all a matter of fine-tuning, and I will fine-tune. I will give you fuckers content. <laughs> Fine, motherfucker. Sun Seal, 07. Hey, son. Damn, I'm about to stop. I, I did the two videos and it was really w good. And, and then... <laughs> well, if I'm being truthful, the wife came home and... It, it kind of threw me off my game because... Sun Seal, it's fine. XD. <laughs> well, I mean, you can always watch the replay. But yeah, you'll see. She'd had a bad she had a bad day at work. She's kinda cranky because, you know, stupid bullshit. It doesn't really matter outside of the household and uh, I get I guess I'm just susceptible to moods. But rather than try and kinda recover from that, I'd rather just take a quick break and either do this stuff off stream or maybe do a second stream. I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet. But anyway. Hope y'all enjoyed this. Yes, 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 I know. I have been Mad Max of Maxwell Manor, and I will see you all next time. <laughs>